Hi, I'm Greg Dell with Attorneys Dell and Schaefer, and I'm joined today by Attorney Stephen Jessup, and we're going to answer the question, can a long-term disability insurance company require objective evidence of disability if none exist? And Stephen, it's a um, very common situation that we see all the time, and, and before you go ahead and answer the exact question here, let's clarify what is objective evidence? What does that mean? Yeah, so the way insurance companies usually look at objective medical evidence is diagnostic testing. You know, if you have a back problem, do you have MRIs, you know, CAT scans? Uh, if you have radiating pain, EMG and nerve conduction studies, um, you know, even so much as from cognitive problems, neuropsychological testing, those look at those as, as objective evidence to support your, your complaints. So there's usually diagnostic. A lot of times I'll argue that clinical examination for certain conditions like fibromyalgia where you're looking for various, you know, the trigger points and all that stuff, that, that would constitute objective evidence. Uh, they don't give that as much weight. I would say it, from an insurance uh, lexicon, it is actual medical testing, diagnostic testing. And I guess to further clarify what objective is, what are what is subjective information or subjective evidence? That's like when with the vast majority of cases, um, I'm, I have fatigue, uh, I experience pain, um, I mean even headaches, you know, I, I have severe headaches, migraines, I'm not able to work. So your complaints, like I think one of the best sources to kind of get this weird broad brush that they try to the paint is Unum policies. Um, a lot of times at the claims handling level, they don't argue it, but if it goes into litigation, then they bring it up. Most UNAM uh, disability policies have a 24-month provision for what they call self-report symptom conditions. And they just say anything that can't be verified by testing, uh, complaints that can't be verified, including fatigue, pain, headaches, t uh, dizziness, all these things. So anything that they feel that you can't support with some type of Here's concrete medical evidence of it. Uh, they argue that it's just it's a subjective complaint that you have. So those are usually your complaints. So there's a whole list of medical conditions for which we help people for which there is simply no objective testing necessarily to verify what is causing your, your symptoms, whether it's migraines, whether it's uh, fibromyalgia. Um, th there's a whole there's a whole variety of them, chronic fatigue syndrome. I mean, some things are some blood tests coming, but for the most part, there are a, a variety of very common long-term disability diagnosis for which there's no objective evidence. And the disability companies more often, I'd say more than 75% of the denial letters that we see say that you do not have sufficient objective evidence to support your claim. So the initial question was is if there is an objective evidence for these medical conditions, can the disability insurance companies require that and still deny the claim? Um, in some situations where there's policies, and the first that always comes to my head is a Great West policy for the uh, American Dental Association. It requires objective evidence um, to their satisfaction. So they get to determine if it's satisfying objective evidence. So if there is a requirement in the policy, then it's a plan provision. Um, otherwise, no, I mean, really, they, they can demand it, they can say this and that, and we, we argue that all the time, that, you know, there is nothing to support these subjective complaints. You know that. Pain is subjective. There's no test to document it. And what it really comes down to, what we say a lot, is that they're arguing, not that the, the diagnosis doesn't equal disability. So they won't say, you don't have this condition. Right. We just don't see that there's enough evidence support that it would be so severe that you would have restrictions and limitations that would prevent you from work. So that's how they kind of try to skirt a lot of this. And even in, in conditions such as like rheumatoid arthritis, where they can do testing to determine the presence of it, they'll still argue, well, you have it, but you're subjective complaints of the problem, you know, the pain, uh, we don't think it ri raises to, rises to a level of impairment. So that, that that's the game they play. And then, you know, for our purposes in doing appeals, if there's a denial, we're just trying to support the claim. Um, then there's, you know, your objective testing that you can get, whether it's functional capacity evaluations, neuropsychological testing, that can draw that nexus a little bit and give objective um, evidence of those restrictions and limitations to your subjective complaints, you know? So it's, it's probably the biggest battle that goes on in any disability claim is this idea that your subjective complaints aren't enough to support, you know, restrictions that would keep you from working. 
And I think I want to clarify that a little bit of the question here is it's not so much the policy says, and there's one that we know about yeah. out there, which is a tiny little blurb in the world yeah. of disability, but even though it's not a requirement in there, I mean, how often do you see in these denial letters you don't have objective all evidence? All the time. It's all the time. So, you know, 70% of people go to the doc, when they go to the doctor, doctor evaluates them, does all this testing and says, I don't know exactly mm -hmm. what's causing your medical condition. It's very common. And so for those people, the 70% of people who go to the doctor and don't have what would be considered this objective evidence to support the claim, should they assume that they're going to be denied because they don't have objective evidence to support their complaints? I wouldn't say across the board you have to assume you will be. I think you do have to have an understanding there's a much greater chance. And a lot of times too from a medical aspect, you know, medicine is, is at sometimes educated guesses. It can take a long time before an actual diagnosis is hammered out. They'll rule a lot of things out. Well, it isn't MS, it isn't this, it isn't that. So it can take a long time. And a lot of time that is to the detriment of the insured because the insurance company, especially on you know, these group provided policies, they're just looking at snippets in time, right? And it, you go through, you have appeal processes and if it gets up in court, court's just gonna look at the time the claim started to when it ended. Well, if your firm diagnosis didn't come till after that point, that's not something you can use later. So it can, insurance companies will use that fact, like you were saying, that it's not always clear cut to people's detriment. Um, then saying like, listen, we just don't see it's hair. And a lot of times too, even trying to move, and you used to see it a lot with fibromyalgia many years ago, that it's a mental health problem, it's in your head. Um, you know, we'll see a lot of times you have somatic complaints and that's usually you're creating these, you know, you don't really have them. Uh, and these are like little ways and nuances that the insurance companies try to undermine, you know, your complaints and what you're saying. So I want to talk a second about how we and provide this kind of tip, how we shift the dynamic to make things objective when they're not necessarily objective. And I'm handling appeal right now for someone with chronic migraines, which means they get migraines more than 15 days a month unpredictably. And when the claim was denied and they, the in-house company sent everything to the treating doctors and they got it back and they said, well, there's no new objective evidence presented from the doctors. And I'm looking at it and I'm talking to doctors and I go, well, what objective evidence do they want for migraines? There's no mm -hmm. MRI, CT scan, there's no testing, nothing to say, yes, you have migraines. So the migraines are the subjective complaints from the claimant, mm -hmm. and that's how you diagnose it. And so the way we shift the dynamic in these cases is we basically take all of their complaints, meaning the, if it's migraines, it's gonna be the, throb, the throbbing pain, the light sensitivity, um, you know, inability to focus, having to close your eyes, having to sleep, um, vomiting, nausea, all of these symptoms, which now we say, here's your objective evidence. These are all physical things, symptoms become your objective evidence. So the disability company likes to distinguish and play the game that say their objective evidence is the testing and what we do and what a person should do as a claimant is say, no, my symptoms, which are verifiable um, in, in most cases, because the only one that's not verifiable is the pain yeah. because you can't measure pain. But other things are you know, are verifiable. And that's where as a claimant and what we do, the art of how we present claims is to say, all of these symptoms in their totality are objective. And to take it one step further, Steve, we know from the courts how they interpret, especially people with fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. you know, how they say, look, there's no test for fibromyalgia, but there's this tender point, 18 point tender point test. And also the courts have said, you have to consider all of the symptoms as objective evidence. Yeah. So, the clinical presentation and you know going back to the migraines like you said headache logs as well people with pain pain logs you know it's just additional evidence to show the impact when you have it tracking a lot of times insurance companies now are requesting headache logs uh, for migraine claims um, so you know it's something that we do and we work with the claimants and we help them prove the objective evidence and most importantly steve is getting all that information in the medical records which means if you have a condition that you know there's no objective testing, you have to document every single thing. You said a headache log, a pain log, a symptom log. Get your doctor to read those things into the records because if it's all there, then you're going to have what we're going to argue is objective evidence. And you're going to be able to tell your company, look at all of my complaints. And they'll say, well, those are subjective. But then you can say, no, they have objective manifestations. Mm -hmm. They manifest themselves in a physical manner. So it's take the, you got to know how to play the game, which is why 
we always say continue to you know educate yourself about this process watch our videos read our articles read about resolve cases that we have on our website get educated the better educated you are the better position the claimant's going to be in when they go to their doctors and document it and if they're handling the claim on their own the way in which they speak to their disability company the way in which they fill out claim forms all the things that we guide and help people to do so no matter where you live in the country we encourage you to reach out to Stephen or myself for an initial free consultation we'll simply ask you to provide us with a copy of your disability policy or a copy of your denial letter if you've been denied we represent claimants all over the country therefore we can help you no matter where you live we also encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button below we always want to educate claimants around the country about the long-term disability process and the better educated you are the better position you're going to be in to protect your long-term disability benefits so we'll be here in the future should you need us and we look forward to speaking with you soon